so in the last class we have seen push pull converter so now the fourth one which comes under isolated dc dc converter is half bridge converter so half bridge converter is, is also an isolated dc dc converter which means that the input side and the output side will be physically or electrically separated by using a transformer coil okay so this is the circuit diagram of half bridge dc dc isolated converter so here you can see that uh, transformer core is separating the input side and the output side so it is an isolated dc dc converter here the major difference from that uh, of push pull converter is here you can see two capacitors c1 and c2 is placed the value of this capacitor c1 and c2 will be equal so that it will divide the voltage the input voltage equally across this switch s1 and s2 okay that is here v in is the input voltage it will be dividing equally voltage into two parts like here it is v in by 2 here also it is v in by 2 okay input voltage is v in that is divided equally into two half that is v in by 2 across capacitor c1 and v in by 2 across capacitor c2 okay so that is the major difference from that uh, push pull converter okay and also s1 and s2 is there and uh, as same as i told in that push pull converter both s1 and s2 should not be turned on simultaneously if both s1 and s2 is turned on simultaneously what will be happening here both the capacitor will be short circuited and the and a large current will be flowing across this capacitor and it will damage the device or it will destroy the device this process is called as shoot through so this shoot through should be avoided so for that the switches s1 and s2 should not be turned on simultaneously when s1 is on s2 should be off when s2 is on s1 should be off like that okay so shoot through should be avoided like that s1 and s2 should be mutually exclusive that is when s1 is on s2 should not be on when s2 is on s1 should not be on and also s1 have to be turned off completely before s2 turned on so the delay between s1 or s2 on is called as dead band that is here in this figure you can see s1 is on for dt time then both are off for some time then s2 is turned on at that time s1 is off s2 is turned on for dd time like that so in a complete cycle t both s1 and s2 will be on and some uh, delay time will be there where both s1 and s2 is off okay so here main thing you have to consider is that s1 and s2 both the switches should not be turned on simultaneously okay okay so now when the s1 is on what will be happening here when the s1 is on uh, the voltage across the capacitor c1 and c2 i told that uh, the major function of this capacitor is to divide this voltage into two equal halves that across uh, c1 it will be v in by 2 and across c2 it will be v in by 2 and also uh, when switch s1 is on what will be happening here s2 is off switch s1 is on means s2 should be off it should be mutually exclusive so the current path will be like this uh, c1 then this uh, s1 this primary winding then again c1 c1 s1 primary winding and c1 current path will be like that and also this capacitor c1 will be discharging and the c2 will be uh, idle okay c1 will be discharging like this in this path c1 s1 primary winding then c1 like this it will be discharging okay and in uh, secondary side what will be here the polarity will be like plus minus so uh, do, dotted end will be becoming positive and uh, non dotted end will be becoming negative so same polarity will be inducing in the secondary side dotted end will be becoming positive and non dotted end will be becoming negative so as a result of that here the diode d1 will be conducting and the d2 will be diode d2 will be reverse biased so as the d1 is conducting this inductor lx will be charging okay inductor ls will be charging here okay so 
same as that it is written here in secondary dotted end will be positive with respect to non dotted end so the diode d1 conducts and d2 reverse bias so the inductor charges from minimum to the inductor lx will be charging from minimum to maximum okay this is what when switch s1 is on now switch s2 is on what will be happening when s2 is on s1 will, should be off okay then the capacitor c2 will be discharging capacitor c2 will be discharging here and the uh, polarity of this primary side it will be reversed that is minus dotted end will become minus and non dotted end will become positive and the current path will be like c2 then uh, primary then s2 then c2 like that current will be flowing like that and the polarity uh, non uh, dot and polarity will become negative and non dotted and polarity become positive uh, same it will be inducing in the secondary side dotted and will become negative and non dotted and will become positive as a result what will be happening the diode d2 will be conducting and the diode d1 will be reverse bias as d2 is conducting because of d2 is conducting this inductor will again charge okay inductor will again charge okay whereas d1 is reverse bias okay so inductor will be charging from minimum to maximum in this case also okay and also uh, when any of the switch is turned on voltage across secondary side side voltage across secondary side will be n2 by n1 into v in by 2 n2 by n1 into v in by 2 why v in by 2 here the the across primary side the voltage will be coming v in by 2 so here v secondary will be equal to n2 by n1 into v in by 2 okay so the inductor voltage when s1 or s2 either s1 or s2 is on which we can return as lx into delta i lx it will be equal to v secondary minus v0 v secondary we have got here already okay lx into delta i lx which is equal to v, uh, v secondary is n2 by n1 into v in by 2 minus v0 into dt for on time okay okay this is for on time this is equation number one when s1 and s2 is off when both s1 and s2 is off what will be happening when both s1 and s2 is off in primary side no current will be flowing and in secondary side what will be happening that uh, here one inductor is there it will be already charged so the charge inductor will start to discharge across load so it will be coming like this and from here the current stored in the inductor it will be divided and dividing into two halves across this secondary two, uh, two halves of the secondary and hence the diode D2 as well as D1 will be conducting when the switch S1 and S2 is off. Understood? That is when S2, S1 and S2 is off means in primary side no current will be flowing. Across secondary here also no current will be there but here the inductor which will be already charged it will start to discharge across this load. So inductor will uh, current will be flowing like this and from here it will be splitting into two equal halves across this two sides of the secondary and hence the diode d1 and d2 will be conducting so the inductor will be discharging from maximum to minimum when both s1 and s2 is off okay both the diodes d1 and d2 gets forward biased and the inductor discharges the energy stored across it through load splitting equally across each secondary winding so here uh, the um, output voltage will be v0 into half minus d into t why this half minus d into t when both s1 is s1 and s2 is off it is not for the time t it will be half of that because for a part s1 is on for a part s2 is on so it will be half so v0 into half in half minus d into t previously it was like 1 minus d into t here half we are we have taken because s1 and s2 is off for some time only not for that full time okay so 
v0 into half minus d into t which is equal to lx into delta ilx. Delta ilx will be a decreasing current because inductor is discharging. Half minus d into t both switches turned off. Half denote half of the total time t. Okay. So from 1 and 2 solving we will be getting v0 divided by v in which is equal to n2 by n1 into d. It is depending on the uh, turns ratio n2 and n1 of the transformer and the duty cycle. Okay. So this is the relation between the output and input voltage in the half bridge DC DC converter. And also in generally half bridge converter it is mainly used in uh, personal computers SMBS module. In personal computers as a SMBS module and it will be having single primary and multiple secondary windings. It will be having single primary and multiple secondary windings. And from multiple secondary windings, it can take uh, different different types of different different uh, voltage voltage ratings as out. Okay. And the uh, waveform is shown here. Initially across primary, when S1 is on, uh, the primary winding voltage will be V i by 2, V in by 2. Okay and the uh, secondary side also it will be inducing same voltage the inductor lx will be uh, charging so the inductor current will be increasing from minimum to maximum diode d1 will be conducting hence diode current will be increasing here diode d2 will be reverse bias so no current flows across diode d2 and the uh, switch switch s1 is on hence uh, no voltage is there across s1 uh, and across S2, it will be v, VI. Input voltage is VI, it will be coming across this S2, switch S2. Okay. Now, the second case both S1 and S2 is off. When both S1 and S2 is off, primary side no current will be there. Okay. Secondary side, the charged inductor will be discharging. So, the current will be discharging from uh, maximum to minimum. Okay. That is shown here. And uh, as the inductor is discharging, the current across in inductor will be splitting across both sides of the secondary side. Hence, the diode D1 and D2 will be conducting and it will be also a decreasing current that is shown here. And the voltage across switch S1 will be V in by 2 and also switch S2 also will be V in by 2 as the capacitor is dividing equally voltage into two halves. So, it will be V in by 2 v in by 2 okay and uh, the third case when the switch s2 is on and s1 is off when s2 is on the primary polarity across primary it will be reverse hence the voltage across primary will be minus v in by 2 the diode d2 will be conducting hence the inductor will be charging from minimum to maximum that is shown here inductor current will be increasing from minimum to maximum Diode D1 will be reverse bias, hence no conduction. So, uh, diode current D1 will be ID1 will be 0. Diode D2 is conducting, so it will be an increasing current. So, that is shown here. And the voltage across uh, switch S2 will be 0 as it is uh, short circuited. And the voltage across switch S1 will be total V in, okay, that is VI, okay. And the same thing it will be repeating from the okay that is what written here when s1 is on voltage across primary is v in by 2 inductor current increases from minimum to maximum diode d1 is forward by s and across s2 voltage will be vi when s1 and s2 is of inductor discharges and the current splits equally across secondary and the freewheeling diode d1 and d2 conducts voltage across primary is zero and voltage across uh, switches s1 and s2 will be v in by 2 and the third case when S2 is on, voltage across primary is minus V in by 2, reverse because of that reverse polarity, inductor charges from minimum to maximum, okay, inductor current will be increasing from minimum to maximum, diode D2 conducts and the diode D1 will be reverse bias, so the voltage across switch S1 will be VI. So, this is all about half bridge DC-DC converter, okay, and uh, in total switched mode regulator classification it can be classified into two types one is isolated converter and another one is non isolated converter okay 
non isolated converter we have seen first where the input and output side is directly connected that is direct flow of current will be there from input and output side okay those uh, converters are buck converter boost converter buck boost converter okay these all are non isolated converter then the another classification is isolated converters in that isolated con converters unidirectional core excitation is there and bidirectional core excitation is there in the unidirectional co core excitation flyback converter and forward converter is there there you uh, if you visualize that circuit you can see on uh, diode d1 is there on uh, in uh, secondary side the current direction will be same only that is unidirectional core excitation okay uh, flyback converter and forward converter uh, converter are the example for that and bidirectional core excitation again if you visualize push pull converter half bridge converter and full, full full bridge converter you can see here the polarity will be different in whenever the switch s1 and s2 is turned on and uh, turned on and turned off the polarity will be different as because of that polarity that uh, two diodes placed the uh, diode d1 and d2 will be conducting or it will be reverse bias like that so the uh, current direction will be in both direction okay so that is why bidirectional core excitation isolated converters so this is these are the classifications of switched mode regulator regulators okay i hope uh, everything is clear to you okay so with this uh, we'll be winding up this module okay thank you